It's a little bit sooner than I expected, but after only seven months from its announcement back in May, we finally have some more news regarding Overlord Season 4. A brand new trailer showing us what to expect, as well as a general release date of 2022. Before we take a closer look at what we were given though, let's first check out some of the other anime news. The new trailers and announcements to come out from earlier on this month. Starting with all the new isekai. First we have the recently announced adaptation of My Isekai Life. I gained a second character class and became the strongest sage in the world. Which, with a title like that, I'm sure you can already guess that this is more of a power fantasy. A classic tale in which the protagonist that gets isekai is conveniently given a power that's completely unrivaled. That's not to say the story might not have any depth to it, but with a source material that's not very known, as well as a manga that's rated below average at best, I don't think we should expect this to stand out as anything spectacular. Especially since Studio Reverut's past works have been pretty average. An upcoming isekai that does look to be pretty good though is the unexpected sequel to The Devil as a Part-Timer. As an anime that's been up in the air for the better part of a decade now, I was pretty hyped to know that Satan's minimum wage employment saga would finally be continuing. I'm not going to talk about what you missed from season 1, but if you've never had the chance to watch this comedic fantasy before, then you're definitely missing out on the hilarious adventures of Satan working at McDonald's. It's a unique reverse isekai that's entertaining to say the least, especially in this oversaturated era of uninspired power fantasies. Now, since we are on the topic of basic power fantasies, we were recently given a trailer for Studio Silverlink's newest light novel adaptation. A 2018 novel that goes by the name of The Greatest Demon Lord is Reborn as a Typical Nobody. I want to say this show will be similar to The Misfit of Demon King Academy, but I don't think it'll touch on the same comedic elements that Anos Foldigote did. Yes, it does focus on that same plot element of a demon lord resurrecting with overpowered abilities, but rather than have people constantly doubting it, instead it's more so centered around people fawning over it. So hopefully this series will have something other than just an OP demon lord to keep it entertaining. With all those other isekai and fantasy out of the way, let's take a closer look at the trailer for Overlord Season 4 now. As I said before, what we're seeing here is the events from Volume 10, an arc in the novels called The Ruler of Conspiracy. Since last season ended with the establishment of the Sorcerer Kingdom, it makes sense then that what we're seeing is the aftermath of that. Whether it be Jerkniv's Empire or any other nation, it seems that the world isn't just going to idly sit by while this new Sorcerer King rises to power. So, in addition to the usual antics that we're used to from within Nazarick, we're also going to get a lot more politics along with Ainz's influence over it. The scale of his interactions with the world is about to get a whole lot bigger. That's why we see quite a few new characters here. In any case, it seems the animation quality is going to be at least on par with last season. The CG does look to be a little less jarring, but you can still clearly tell that that's what it is. Given that they have had quite a bit of time to work on it though, I'd like to imagine that we will see some general quality improvements. At the very least, I'm hoping to not see any more of this. Now, if you've played the mobile game Mass for the Dead, then I'm sure you already recognize this new character from the official visual. If not, then all you need to know right now is that he's a massive war troll, a character we see to be making an appearance in Ainz's Colosseum. Other than that, the only worthwhile news we have is a confirmed 2022 release date, which is pretty much on par with what I had predicted last video. Whether it comes out in the winter, spring, or summer though, well, unfortunately that's something we're going to have to wait for. We can only hope that it's not planned for the fall season. If we set aside all the isekai and fantasy now, what we have next is the trailer for Spy X Family, a popular manga that showcases the unlikely yet comedic union of a spy, assassin, and telepath. Two of which don't know who the others really are, but still need the whole group to act as a family as part of a cover for their true jobs. So, while everyone is maintaining their secret identities, they're also pursuing their own agendas all while keeping up this act as husband, wife, and daughter. It's a pretty entertaining plot that's filled with quite a few comedic elements, especially when it comes to Anya who knows both their true identities. Another anime coming from Studio Wit is the Netflix original series titled Bubble, and this is a series that's looking to be absolutely stacked. Not only does it have the god-tier animation team from Studio Wit, but it also has a soundtrack from the legendary Hiroyuki Sawano, a script written by the man behind Madoka Magica and Psychopaths, then the same director who was responsible for the first three seasons of Attack on Titan. So, with a crazy talented roster like that, I think it's pretty safe to expect the absolute best from them, especially since they have the deep pockets of Netflix backing them. Now, it is a little bit early to say it's going to be a masterpiece, but the track record of everyone involved does give me a little bit of hope. As for what the story's about, 
Well, it's a unique take on a post-calamity Tokyo. You see, after the sudden appearance of these gravity-defying bubbles, Tokyo had become this uninhabitable disaster zone. It was a place that would later become a massive playground for people to do some crazy parkour battles. Then, it's during one of these battles that our two main characters would just so happen to stumble across each other, resulting in a relationship that I'm sure will lead to the mystery of these bubbles slowly getting unraveled. So, from what we can tell from this brief yet captivating trailer, it's a beautiful and intriguing world that's surrounded by several layers of mystery. Something I can't wait to see more of when it comes out in April. Now, aside from that, we do also have a couple trailers from Studio Mappa's newest upcoming anime. First is the second trailer to the extremely hyped adaptation of Chainsaw Man, then the next is the initial preview for the equally popular manga Hell's Paradise, the final installment in what people like to refer to as Shonen Jump's Hell Trio. But even with this one dealing with a lot more historical elements, at its core it's still a series focused on ninja, samurai, and demons. It carries many of the same themes that Jujutsu Kaisen and Chainsaw Man does. What makes this particular story so interesting though is that there's no distinctly good character that we focus on. The lines between good and evil aren't so clearly distinguished here. Instead, every person we see in Hell's Paradise is a death row inmate who's been sent here for a chance at redemption. An island filled with danger and mystery for each of the group to overcome. With that being it for all the trailers, let's move on to all the new anime announcements now. First, we have confirmed sequels for the historical action Golden Kamui, the Slice of Life Isekai Ascendance of a Bookworm, then the biking anime Yawamushi Pedal. Not much was given regarding this next one, but we do also have confirmation of a new installment into the Roroni Kenshi series coming out. The second season of the Misfit of Demon King Academy was recently revealed to be a split core endeavor. Then, the final season of the Madoka Magica side story was postponed to spring. When it comes to completely new adaptations, the first that caught my eye was the comedy Isekai Bootaliver, the story of a man turned into a pig. So, just as the title states, what we have is the story of a man who passes out from eating raw pig liver then wakes up to find out that he's been reincarnated as one. The pig, not the liver. I have absolutely no idea what to expect, but if the source material has only been out for a year, then for an anime adaptation to come out so soon after, there must be something that makes it popular. Other adaptations include the novel Reign of the Seven Spellblades, the manga Ayakashi Triangle, the novel Kokyu no Karasu, and the manga The Tunnel to Summer, all of which are getting TV anime except for The Tunnel to Summer. This drama mystery light novel will be getting a movie by Studio Clap. Now, the last thing that I wanted to talk about was the unexpected reveal of a new Makoto Shinkai movie, a promising new film that'll be going by the name of Suzume no Tojimari. Unlike how its predecessors were more focused on romance and drama though, this was described by Shinkai himself to be a modern action-adventure story. Of course, there is still the core supernatural elements that make each film distinct from the other, but I'm a big fan of the fact that this will be taking a more exciting approach. But yeah, that's pretty much all the news we're sharing today. If any of these caught your eye, then be sure to let me know which ones you're most hyped for in the comments. But anyway, I hope you guys have a great holiday season with your families, and you can catch the next video in about a week or so. Until then though, as always, thank you so much for watching, and if you enjoyed this type of anime news content, then you already know what to do. So, until next time, ciao!